Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. It's uh, Len Goucher and Gary Hines here at the Rocky Lake Dome on Monday, October the 12th. And uh, Gary, it's very quiet around here today, but uh, the last week or so has been anything but quiet. And uh, maybe you could give us a brief overview as what's happened in the last seven days and uh, maybe uh, tell us uh, what might be happening in the next week or so as we uh, travel that real steep hill toward the uh, grand opening at the end of the month. Yeah, Len, we're here just giving thanks. That's why we're here today. Everybody else home eating turkey. Yeah. Anyway, uh, a lot of accomplishments were, were made last week at the, at the dome here. Uh, we ended up pulling all the insulation in place, and as you look at the dome, you can see it looks like you're inside the belly of a whale uh, with the insulation in place. Uh, we've put the boards up to make sure that they fit, and we put the glass in the boards, and we're getting ready for that big day on the 30th when we have our opening. Uh, we've also painted out the dressing room, and the lights are now on in the dressing room, and uh, so we're working towards those uh, little final steps. We do have to take the boards, some of the board sections out here and modify them to accommodate the safety doors or safety exits that the HRM uh, have required us to put in. I know, Gary, that's true, and uh, I know uh, in speaking to our contractor, Randolph Coombs, uh, in his mind, life and safety are the most, are paramount, and of course with the Rocky Lake board, uh, having said that, it's the same with us. Over the period of the next week, Gary, uh, what's going to be happening here? I know that uh, things are happening so quickly, we can't even keep up to date with them most of the time. Yeah, next week uh, we will have the guys in here from Monarch Construction looking at the boards and the sections that need cut. We have to switch the Zamboni gate to uh, match the entrance, and we have to uh, put uh, three new exit gates in when they arrive. They come from, actually come from Alberta, and uh, they will be coming in. We'll be looking at putting in the nets and getting all that stuff done before we start our ice building surface. Uh, there's a lot of uh, odds and ends to order. We will also be uh, insulating our uh, Zamboni room so that we can accommodate the Zamboni machine uh, and not have freeze-ups during the winter months. I understand that Zamboni machine is coming uh, sometime in the next uh, week or so, uh, which, is, which is good news. Gary, maybe what we could do uh, is just take a real quick trip through and we'll have a look and uh, see what's happened here in the last few days and uh, we'll be back in a few minutes. All right. Thanks, then. Len's now focusing on the uh, insulation on the corners and how it meets the corners. You can see that there are zippers or uh, Velcro strips throughout there, and the uh, individual insulation sections were pulled up in place and they're tied in place. Uh, the spots that are lighter don't have insulation, but they allow for some circulation of the air through the dome and in through the insulation so that we don't get humidity build up. Uh, Len's now focusing on the boards and the glass. Uh, we've got that all in place and it all seemingly fits well. Uh, he's stopping on the end door, which is one of the ones where we have to put a matching door in the board section uh, to accommodate that exit, emergency exit that's there. There are five of those in the building. Gary, I'm just uh, coming over to the, uh, to the south side uh, of one of the emergency exit doors, which uh, is very important here. We have five emergency doors and that one lines up perfectly with the emergency exit. Yes, it does, and one of the other ones lined up too, so we only have to uh, have three new board sections brought in with the door. Len's now, we're now in the dressing room, and uh, Len's focusing on the nice new hardwood benches that are going to be a feature of our dressing rooms. Uh, still left to do is a little more paint trimming, and there's a little more uh, uh, coat hangers and that kind of thing to go on the walls, and uh, the lighting inside here has to be done. We do have the lighting done in the hallway, which Len will focus on when we go in the hallway. You can see that the uh, front entrance doors are painted that nice blue color, and uh, Len's going to swing around and pick up some of the lighting on the walls that will be lighting and illuminating the corridors. And now he's over on the, uh, actually the airlock going in. You can see the doors that are already here and all the hardware is here. So it's just a matter of the time it takes to install those, and we'll be ready to rock and roll. We're now in the ice plant room, and Len's going to just focus on the individual pieces of equipment as we circulate around the room. At uh, a later date, we'll do an update on that equipment, but presently uh, it's uh, in a state of construction, and so we'll leave that for a later date to just show you how complex the uh, system is. Well, Gary, as everyone can see, it's uh, a lot happening here and uh, happening very quickly. Uh, uh, is there anything else maybe you want to mention that's going to be happening over the next few days? Yes, Len, this week we'll be opening up the uh, airlock between the dome and the dressing rooms, and we will also be doing the overhead lighting in the dome which is going to make it uh, uh, quite a feat. And it's going to be quite interesting at the excitement that we generated when, the, when people actually come inside and see this dome. Uh, in the dressing room, we'll be continuing to work on the airlocks and the, and the hardware system in the dressing room. We will be working towards 
late in the week or the first of next week uh, commissioning the uh, chilling plant and uh, there will only be odds and ends to tie up the last couple of weeks and we'll start making ice and uh, we'll get our job finished. Yeah, that's wonderful, Gary. And, uh, you know, the, the wonderful thing about the Rocky Lake Dome is it's a good news story. It's one of the best news stories that's come out of HRM in a long time. Uh, I'm so proud to be part of this, and I know that Gary, uh, Barry Mason and uh, the Rocky Lake Board uh, have put their heart and soul into this project. And uh, one of the great things about this project, uh, Gary, and I'm sure you'll agree with me, is that there is not one cent of municipal taxpayers' money involved in this facility, which is a community facility and one of the first private facilities built in 50 years, over 50 years in this province. That in itself is a really good news story because the municipal taxpayers, uh, Gary, uh, are not putting one cent in this. Uh, yes, there is provincial government money, but um, from the municipal standpoint, uh, it's a tough place, uh, especially in this, in this day and age, to uh, draw, um, draw revenue from. So, Yeah, Landon, just signing off, I have to echo the, your words because I can remember sitting in council with you a number of years ago and actually asking staff at that time and asking HRM to look at a mechanism that would allow private building of uh, recreational facilities and I hope that this uh, facility that we're finishing now will serve as an example of what can be done if you let private sector work with governments and get things done because uh, no longer can taxpayers foot the bill for all the facilities that we need in our province. Yeah, and, and, and it's not that there's not tax money here, but Gary, uh, probably the worst place in the world to take, take significant amounts of, of tax revenue from is the municipal tax base because it is non-discriminatory from the standpoint of the ability to pay uh, versus the uh, uh, provincial uh, income tax uh, revenue. So Gary, uh, once again, uh, from all of us at the Rocky Lake Board, uh, happy Thanksgiving, folks, and we'll see you again in a week.